great so we are live now uh, guys welcome thank you very much for joining again sixth in the series uh, where uh, with under startup uh, beat covid 19 so today we have uh, you know one of the most active uh, japan based vc firm uh, you know uh, people with us so uh, let me introduce you abr san takeshi abr san who is uh, one of the founding A general partner in uh, Rebrite Partners and uh, Bridge Basin San. Bridge is a very known uh, entity in our ecosystem. All of us, most of us, know Bridge. Uh, so, uh, you know, so Rebrite has been very actively investing in India for a long time, and uh, we we all are eager to know how this current situation, current COVID nineteen, is going to impact not just rebrite partners uh, way of looking at indian ecosystem indian startup ecosystem but also the rest of the japanese vcs how is this over how is this going to hurt or push the overall sentiments of japan vcs uh, uh, okay so uh, let me hand it over to abr san and bridge san to take it forward and after 30 minutes we will start taking up the questions so guys my my one suggestion is don't raise your hands so whenever you have a question just type in the uh, in the text box and i'll pick up the uh, the relevant ones and we'll uh, take one by one questions over to you abr san and bridge san sure uh hi fellas uh actually i'm here now in the uh, singapore so uh as a kind of introduction uh by the uh, sunil uh, we are the uh, japan Singapore India hybrid venture capital firm uh so we have an office in Tokyo here in Singapore and the Bangalore so the uh bridge as a general partner who is the head of the uh, in the region uh is uh, uh taking care of all the activity of there in India so uh bridge how about you uh, quickly uh make an introduction like uh, our you know the one of the some of the you know example of portfolio company in the recent activity etc Sure, sure. Thanks, Abhir Sir. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bridge Basin. I'm general partner at Rebrite Partners. As uh, Abhir Sir said, we're a cross-border venture capital fund. Uh, we have been active in India for the last five years, uh, where we typically invest in seed to Series A stage. So, typical investment size of uh, anywhere from few hundred uh, uh, k USD to about two million US dollars. Uh, and we have invested in fifteen companies uh, till date in India. um some of our portfolio companies that you may have heard of are uh, in shorts uh, in digital media news reading space uh, docs app in digital healthcare telemedicine uh, led transport in logistics uh, and supply chain businesses and medica bazaar in uh, b2b uh, healthcare supply chain business um we uh, invest across sectors um, so we as i said you know these are diverse sectors healthcare logistics uh digital media uh we've also recently been investing in deep tech uh, so we've invested in a few companies and enterprise software chip design agri tech uh, and a few others as well um and as our discussion goes along i i can give uh, more uh, perspective on the kind of sectors that we look at or the kind of companies that we are interested in sure thanks very much so on top of that uh we of course have uh, some portfolio company there in here in the uh, asean you know major six countries uh one example is the uh bukalapak which is uh, in one of the largest indonesian e-commerce company uh, which is likely uh, went to the unicorn status few days few years back and uh philippines uh, in wallet company is called coins ph which was recently acquired the another you know uh the kind of uh, you know say the uh decacon company which is uh, gojek uh that's uh and then we have some uh, you know other uh, in singapore malaysia etc and uh as uh, sunil it kind of explained that uh, um most of uh you know funds help the investor is the uh, japanese corporation so here we'd like to share a little bit about the uh, situation especially under this corona you know situation how the uh, you know the japanese corporate investor as well as the financial investor like us is uh, you know uh, you know vibe now what is the momentum now kind of things we'd like to share okay so first of all you you know if we uh, divide into the uh, three sectors uh, one is the uh, as i told the corporate investor which is a relatively quite active 
uh, in India as well uh, for the past, uh, say, the 60 months, uh, 80 months or so. And the other sector is, of course, the uh, financial venture capital, especially for the early stage venture capital like us. And the third one is uh, SoftBank. You know, SoftBank itself as a single you know, the player is uh, quite large. So we would like the secretary to uh, discuss uh, the current situation. So first, a corporate investor, um, they are, you know, unfortunately very, very cautious uh, to grab the uh, new deal right, right at this moment. Uh, of course, you, you guys can imagine uh, very easily. So before that, I'd like to share that a little bit about the uh, corona-related status here in Singapore and the Japan. For example, Japan. Uh, by the way, Japan is just, um, you know, the cabinet announced that the uh, the PM Abe is going to make a speech uh, likely tonight or tomorrow uh, to announce the, uh, you know, the emergency you know, situation. But the uh, Japan's loan structure is not allowed to do the very hard uh, lockdown things compared with the uh, other countries. So that the uh, people are you know, re strongly recommended not to you know, move uh, without any essential activities, uh, likely which is going to happen yeah, that, uh, from the tomorrow or day after tomorrow, that, that's the media says. Um, this is uh, almost 90% sure, you know, the, uh, you know, the focus that they would say. So actually, the, uh, even before that, the uh, majority the uh, corporates is, uh, you know, uh, they recommend to not to, uh, you know, go to the office and uh, remote work uh, from the home. So the uh, work from home is already, you know, kind of normal thing in there in Japan. And then the uh, most of the uh, companies, you know, the you know the situation is now the, uh, you know, no travel, of course, no hiring, of course, and no investment. So that is the uh, unfortunate truth. But the um, I see that the uh, no new deal uh, from the Japanese corporate to startups, no matter where, is not going to happen at least the next 30 days. That is the, um, I, I strongly believe for sure. But the, uh, of course, the, you know, the exist, as an existing investor the, the, who, who is already invested in the uh, local startup there in India, uh, might of course uh, be the strong supporter. Because anyways, those corporates are, have a very you know, a strong uh, sense of the urge to do the uh, digital transformation. Anyways, the legacy, you know, the business is going to be dying, but the new, you know, the frontier business, like uh, you know, uh, the for example, case in the, you know, the mobility, you know, sector, or the uh, remote healthcare, healthcare sector, or the uh, any new service, is uh, must try for them. So that's it. They cannot stop that activity itself. They cannot stop their activity to engage in the uh, startups who is uh, doing the innovation things. So that uh, no matter how, they're going to come back. But uh, right at this moment, it's kind of a, you know, the very emergency mode and it's some kind of a, you know, panic mode. So that the, uh, in that case, you know, we cannot uh, expect uh, for those sectors money. How about the uh, early stage, you know, pure venture capital like us? So we are very opportunistic, you know, uh, behaving, you know, creatures. So especially the uh, people's uh, now super bearish, that is actually the uh, very good momentum for the uh, people like us. So of course, you know, it really depends on the, uh, you know, micro circumstances, micro circumstances, but at least for us, that is the first you know, perception, so that the uh, we won't never stop our investment. So yeah, please reach out, and uh, we are happy to talk with you via online. So the, I I believe more or less the you know the pure financial stage investors behavior or the uh, mental momentum is like you know, more or less thing, I think. And uh, lastly, the SoftBank. SoftBank is, uh, you, you know, obviously you know the, they're in a bit, uh, you know, uh, difficult situation, especially for the financial situation. And the rumor says that yeah, they're going to do the private bank because the, uh, you know, to be the public, in, you know, the, the, the corporate and the, uh, you know, the GP of the, uh, you know, the mega fund is not easy. 
So the rumor says that yeah, they're going to be the private, but that, you know, who knows? I, I don't, I, I don't have any information. But the, um, you know, that is still very symbolic, uh, you know, the player. Uh, but the more or less the uh, late stage, you know, uh, um, investor who tend to be the uh, very typical legal table of the uh, you know, capital of the, uh, you know, the late stage, you know, the unicorn, megacorns deal is now very bearish. So once again, so the sector is also super bearish. So, you know, this is, I, I don't need to, uh, you know, to be the, uh, you know, position talk. But the, uh, that is the uh, view from myself. So once again, late stage investor is bearish, corporate investor is super bearish, but the early stage, it depends. And especially the, uh, you know, for the uh, existing portfolio company, we are the full support mode, no matter how, not only the financial side, but the everything. For example, you know, the every corporate of ours is struggling about the logistics or the uh, supply chain. So for that, we are doing a sweat effort for you know, uh, uh, introducing the um, authority or the police, uh, you know, yeah, you know, the authority, etc. Such kind of activities are doing, uh, you know, so much effort by our local team led by the bridge. So that is the situation. For the last, from myself, is about the Singapore situation. Of course, the uh, some of the chunk of the uh, Indian money, you know, VC backing money is coming from the Singapore, right? So Singapore just announced the government just announced that the uh, kind of semi lockdown uh, a few days back, which is starting from tomorrow. So semi lockdown means that the uh, people not uh, you know uh, you know not banned to get out, but the uh, business is banned. So you have to close the school, you have to close the office, you have to close the retail, but the people are not full uh, to stay at home. So it, it is okay, but of course we, you know that there's you know, we are strongly recommended to stay at home, but. Uh, that's why I say the half lockdown kind of thing is going to happen from the tomorrow. So the uh, situation is to get likely, uh, you know, the very near situation to India. But the, um, I think the, um, you know, the venture capital situation is the same, I think. Of course, the one of the uh, pro uh, challenge for us, for all of us is uh, we are not, you know, able to travel, you know. We as a seed stage investor, uh of course at least one time uh we'd like to see the, with the founders uh, who who are just who we are about to invest face to face at least one time but under this kind of circumstances we change this you know that our, our government that they, that is not you know necessary so uh, we, we we will start the conversation and to make the deal done online only so i believe that such kind of a you know uh behavior is going to be the new normal, I think. You know, we have to accept this situation as a new standard, I think. I, I, I'm not the, uh, you know, the specialist, I'm not the doctor, scientist, so I cannot say how long this situation is going to last. At least we have to prepare that this is the new normal. So that uh, we already changed the, uh, our rule that uh, we don't have to physically face with the founders who we, we, we are about to invest. So that is the uh, one of the tiny example, but the uh, such kind of a you know a lot of the uh, you know thing like uh, we you know, as the investor also have to you know adapt to the new normal. Not only the founders. That is my my very strong view, and the uh, all the our team is behaving like that. Okay, that is from myself so far. I pass to you, Rich. Thanks, Arielson. Um, <clears throat> I uh, see in the chat window that a lot of people are having trouble uh, with the video. Uh, if uh, that is the case, uh, should we switch to uh, audio only? Uh, Sunil, are, are you there? Or maybe not, I, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's do that. So I will cut off the video.
Okay, all right. Seems like now people are saying it's uh, fine, and then once I'm done speaking, then I'll pass it back to Abhi and, uh, and he can uh, speak as well. So uh, let me uh, just continue where Abhi Arasan left and uh, talk about you know what is the situation with us uh, as a fund and our portfolio companies. What's our current uh, focus, and uh, also how do we see uh, the market panning out um, in the next few months? How will we come back into uh, you know how how are we now considering our investments and what are the kind of areas uh, that we are looking at uh, or the criteria that we are looking at, I, sh I should say. Um, so uh, as Abhira San said, I think one of the main focus right now is, uh, you know, rightly so to uh, help our own portfolio companies, um, to help them extend their runway. Um, if you are a startup today, you need to have uh, at least 12 month runway because the way we see the market is that next six months uh, will be a lot of volatility uh, where uh, it'll be hard to raise uh, substantial uh, uh, external fundraising. Um, there will be volatility in the in revenue. You know, uh, in in there, there might be situations where customers might renegotiate contracts or, or getting uh, new customers uh, would be harder. Um, hence, um, you know, there's a clear consolidation in making sure that um, you're running your business as efficiently as possible. And there is support from um, your existing investors. I think that should be the first port of call uh, for uh, most uh, startups today. Uh, once you have uh, kind of stabilized your business, and as the external environment improves, um, you know we, we uh, as I said, are uh, actively um, um, uh, still in the market. As Adira San said, that you know as a financial investor, uh, we we uh, we've already raised a fund, and, and there is a certain deployment cycle that we uh, follow. Uh, in fact, there, there were two investments that uh, you know we were in discussion over the last couple of months, and when we closed them um, just two weeks back, um, even uh, as we were preparing for the lockdown. Um, so to uh, give you a sense on you know how uh, we're looking at um, the, you know the investment landscape uh, going forward, um, one of the key things that we will look at uh, as we start um, uh, looking at uh, companies uh, from an investment standpoint. Um, is that we we are looking at companies with a very long horizon, right? So first and foremost, um, you know the the companies that we consider as early stage investor, we are looking to see how those companies will, would evolve in the next uh, six to uh, sorry uh, six to ten years, right? So it's a very long term um, investment horizon from that standpoint. Um, that said, um, you know there are certain criteria that. We are going to pay a lot more closer attention to, um, given the current uh, post-COVID uh, scenario, right? So I think one of the the clear things that we will be uh, uh, looking at is understanding if first and foremost, if this is a business that has uh, has some inherent ad advantage in um, uh, in a volatile environment, right? So as you can see, there are certain businesses, um, whether it's uh, digital new news consumption or media or um, you know, ed tech or uh, you know, even uh, supply chain businesses that actually have had an advantage uh, in the current scenario, right? Um, healthcare, digital healthcare businesses um, are benefiting through this behavioral change as we are uh, going through it live. Um, so one of the uh, things that we would look at first and foremost is, is this a business which will, uh, uh, you know, benefit from the drastic behavioral changes happening uh, both in in uh, in India and, and across the world, I think that will be one of a uh, criteria that we will apply and and how um, companies are uh, are leveraging that. Right. Um, uh, second, we uh, you know one of the things that we want we need to have clarity on is how would uh, the cash flow uh, or the business model evolve uh, as uh, markets come back uh, during recession time. Right. So. Uh, uh, Building a clear runway for your business and at a low burn is uh, uh, is actually now a competitive advantage, right? Uh, we, we are no longer in a scenario where um, companies that have high cash burn uh, and very long um, revenue horizon um, will will be uh, hyper funded, right? So um, to have a, a clear validation uh, from a customer side in terms of how you're building your cash flow, um, you know what what is the business model and how are you building your margins? How can you keep um, your burn low and and show a clear path to profitability? So especially if you're um, uh, trying to raise a Series A or a B round, 
I think investors are going to be uh, very, very uh, particular in in terms of you know how would um, you you showcase long term profitability. Right? Uh, so I think uh, that's going to be one of the key criteria to look at. Um, coming to some of the things that we get asked questions a lot in terms of how startups can build uh, partnerships with investors in Japan, uh, you know, especially corporate investors and others. Um, I think. Uh, one of the key things that uh, investors from Japan look at is uh, how would this partnership um, benefit, uh, um, you know, in terms of their uh, investment or business activity in India. So there are a lot of large corporates, uh, large corporate investors, uh, whether it's uh, the big guys like Mitsubishi, Sumitomo, and others, uh, Mitsui, who are investing in India. And one of the key, key criteria they apply is: um, is there a uh, business synergy uh, that they, one of their business units can build uh, with your startup, right? And then, and that is generally a very loosely defined term. It, it's something that you know you you build on as you start to develop a relationship. But I think that's one of the key things to keep in mind, and especially um, in the post-COVID scenario, uh, that become even more important. That uh, is, is there a way where? Uh, the startup and the corporate investor can can start to attack a specific market and, and gain advantage over there. So um, that's one of the things that uh, you know to keep in mind as as you start to talk to large investors. Um, lastly, as uh, you know, uh, I, I'm sure there are a few startups who have been very uh, drastically affected, right? Um, if you let's say in tra travel, tourism, hospitality, fashion, um, these are the sectors that will have a very large impact, uh, and will, and, and in some cases, it might be harder to even uh, come back from that shock. Uh, and I have been asked by a few founder friends um, uh, in terms of you know what are the alternate scenarios that they can uh, they can work on what what are the ways in which they can uh, continue to survive and build uh, build on from here uh, and um, one of the discussions that came out was um, how you can leverage uh, your existing team your existing uh, uh, product uh, to maybe build for an adjacent market right. Uh, um, it, this would be a time where uh, a lot of businesses would be going through upheaval, and uh, it's actually an opportunity, as as Abhir Hasan said, that if you're able to do uh, keep your ear to the ground, figure out where uh, where the challenge is. Um, there, there are two things that companies always look for, right? If if you're let's say a B two B startup, how do you reduce cost? Uh, or how do you help a large company increase revenue? And in a downturn, both of these become hypersensitive, right? So uh, even if there is a way you can pivot or, or create a new product which helps large companies address um, these two aspects, I think um, uh, that would be a good time to kind of uh, brainstorm and see how you can uh, um, you know, come up with uh, something new that doesn't exist in the market today. And, and if, again, you start to show some early validation, Early stage investment uh, is, is always available uh, to take those bets, right? So I don't think so that would go away. Uh, it, it really depends on if you're able to showcase that opportunity uh, and how you're able to get some early validation in the market. So I think I'll I'll end uh, now with uh, the, this sort of an introduction, and uh, I'll be happy to answer questions uh, along with Abhi Hasan as we uh, go along. Um, so Neil, over to you back here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, is is that over from Abhiarasan also? Also. So Abhiarasan, would you like to add something uh, to end the uh, discussion and then go moving to the towards uh, the question Q and A session? How about the uh, move to Q and A? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So one of the question, uh, you know, uh, being asked is, which are the sectors you think are going to be the key takers of this situation, and which are the ones you think will be dying post this uh, era ends? Uh, you know, no need to say healthcare is the uh, you know. I think we better to divide into the uh, two discussion. One is that even before Corona situation, you know, the venture investing situation has been drastically changed uh, for the past uh, maybe one year or so. 
So the uh, people tend to be the super cautious about the uh, bottom line than the uh, top line, which is the uh, profit than the revenue or GMV, right? So the, um, you know, but the, such kind of a, you know, a momentum of the uh, investor has been drastically reversed by the COVID. That is the situation that it's happening now. So that the, uh, any sector who can make profit is the top priority of all the investors. That is the um, no need to this. You know, this is the um, you know the very top priority, and no any exclusion, you know, exception. That is the uh, one thing. And in terms of the sector, of course, the you know the healthcare or the uh, logistics or the uh, you know supply chain would be now you know under this kind of a uh, you know the uh, COVID uh, you know era, um, you know. You know, taking the benefit. For example, you know, in Japan or in Singapore, in Indonesia, uh, most of the e-commerce companies right now, say the, their GMVs uh, say the uh, 10 to 30 percent, you know, bigger than the uh, uh, the first one. And um, uh, healthcare, no need to say. On the other hand. I think travel, no need to say, is just struggling, right? But the uh, problem is the uh, what about the uh, corona situation is going to be settled down to be the normal move. The people's behavior is going to be changed or is going to be back to before the corona. That is the uh, you know the the. You know, the thesis that you know, nobody cannot write an answer, so that you know, that makes the investor very hesitant to capture such kind of the uh, you know sector. So if you guys are you know the travel sector, accommodation sector, I want you to really consider about those hesitation of the investor. So investors hesitate once again. So if the situation is going to be settled down. That such kind of a you know behavior you know go travel frequently you want know, to take the uh, flight frequently is going to be back or not? Let us see. Uh, we still have a mentary fear, so it's not easy to you know to make investments for such kind of sector. And the other important discussion is about the um, you know the app and marketing. So corporates. Um, not to spend the uh, marketing because you know the anyways uh, they cannot sell any you know they, they cannot sell the travel or the uh, any hotel etc. So that the uh, inventory of the ads for the uh, online is almost zero now. I don't say zero, but they're very tiny, like a ten to twenty percent. So the uh, once again, ad industry is going to be back as the uh, you know before the COVID era or not is also unknown so for such kind of sector also the uh, you know the investor is very very you know the uh, you know the very careful so that is my straight answer about your questions Neil. anything else to rich and and you know yeah right yeah, so I think uh, one of the things, uh, as as I would mentioned earlier, um, you know, to examine what are the things that uh, companies would immediately try to get into. Uh, so one of the things that I see is, uh, uh, you know, this whole uh, movement of work from home uh, has uh, uh, probably led to a huge behavioral change, uh, even in legacy companies, which probably never used to have something like this, right? So uh, the way people interact and the kind of tools that they use will change the way Companies want uh, probably more automation would want to come in, so there's less uh, dependency on uh, human interaction because you know the way uh, companies would like to do a longer term risk planning is um, they would want to not be in a situation which uh, where something like this happens it creates business bottlenecks, right? So the the entire way of business continuity planning will change around that, right? So these are some of the sort of opportunities uh, that, that we can see uh, both from sort of corporate side and also in terms of traditional uh, business and small businesses as well. So, uh, you know, two months back, there was a huge buzz and everyone was talking about the shared mobility and stuff. Where, what do you think, how, how is this going to be impacted? Because after this, I don't know how, how people will uh, take the shared thing concept going forward. 
Uh, I mean, you want to take that? We have Smooth as our portfolio. So, so once again, you know, at the right very moment, uh, nobody cannot predict that the uh, you know the, the people's behavior and the lifestyle is going to be back to the uh, exactly same situation as the before the COVID. So that makes the a uh, lot of the uh, you know most of the investors to hesitate to take the uh, investment opportunity that is the uh unfortunately the uh, same as you know even the uh, early stage investors are same i guess so but the uh, some sectors you know have the uh, strong belief uh, for example the healthcare you know the, in any situation healthcare is a Health, so it is definitely needed. But the uh, if people would still frequently travel around or not, is still unknown. So unfortunately, I don't have a right answer at this moment. But the um, one thing for sure is once again, business in you know, corporate companies, they have no choice to do that. You know, for example, the uh, like uh, you know OEM company, etc. They have to shift into the uh, shared mobility or the uh, you know autonomy or the uh, you know the much more you know efficient you know, mobility like an EV. So I don't think that airport won't stop. It won't. You know, it, it will stop. So, but uh, from the uh, much more larger perspective, as an investor, including the financial investor, a late stage investor like a PE, I don't have a right answer at this moment. And I think uh, just to add, uh, is, uh, from a local India standpoint, um, <clears throat> I see there are two scenarios. One is the immediate uh, uh, short term in terms of next six months, and then uh, the long term, right, six to uh, maybe like say a year from now, right. Um, so in the short term, I actually see uh, you know there'll be a, uh, there'll still be a lot of uh, concern around uh, how COVID would uh, uh, you know uh, what would be the kind of uh, uh, effect locally, right? So I, I don't think so. The, the the fear for cases or the the threat of uh, the disease would go away, and people would sort of gravitate more towards personal transportation or using uh, um, you know uh, shared mobility from a standpoint of let's say small scooters and stuff, which are uh, single use, right? Or one person use. Uh, and maybe uh, you know the uh, services like uh, pooled or, or small vehicles that are uh, or buses and stuff maybe a little bit lesser in the short term, right? But if you see a long term horizon, a year or more, uh, I think we would come back to where we were uh, once there is enough uh, immunity in, in in the general population or when we have a vaccine and the threat has gone away. So, you know, digital payments are definitely uh, going to get another uh, level of push. Uh, do you see this also happening to the crypto? Sorry, your voice is cutting. Can you repeat once again? So how do you see the cryptocurrency moving from here? Uh, is the situation uh, a, a conducive environment for crypto to pick up uh, and go to the, to the common public? Uh, Bridge, go ahead. How about you? Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, at least uh, my opinion is that, uh, you know, people would gravitate towards something that is more safer, uh, where, uh, you know, um, there is a known usage pattern and there is a, uh, a known uh, sort of uh, a long term horizon. Uh, at least personally, a completely personal opinion, I think crypto market will take uh, at least one or two years to uh, come back. Uh, and uh, scale. I think most companies and consumers would uh, try to keep to uh, more safer instruments or safer products um, that are well understood with clear uh, paths uh, to value add. Okay, uh, and you know, uh, so from from the uh, uh, you know rebrite perspective. Uh, are you are you gonna take up some deal in next two to three quarters, or is it actually gonna uh, hurt your sentiments also for the next two quarters? Yeah, for sure. As I told that, the, uh, you know, uh, we as a pure financial investor, uh, now is a uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to say good, 
you know, the people are struggling, but at least the financial, you know, the perception, uh, not a bad timing to make investments. So that's why not. So uh, we are quite bullish about that new investment. So, you know, uh, so uh, you know, uh, Bridge, Bridge Han said, you know, the, the focus will be going forward. The focus is definitely going to be shifting towards the companies who have a lower burn. Uh, does that imply that the, the startups coming from the tier two cities are uh, the time for. Uh, or is, is it the right time for these the, the tier two city startups to uh, get uh, get in the picture? Yes, um, actually, the uh, one of the uh, uh, pipeline you know, deal is the uh, exactly this such kind of, a uh, uh, you know, uh, example uh, tier you know, the startup team from based in the tier two, uh, who is uh, tackling the kind of, uh, you know, digital transformation for the uh, a some sector. So that is the our type. Generally. So one of the reason is uh, they tend to be able to, uh, you know, remain the burn low compared with the uh, tier one series of startups, no, no matter, you know, the knowledge you explain. So that is a very good, um, you know, the, the good fit for the uh, new era of the, uh, you know, the nowadays, uh, you know, much more profit sensitive startup preference by the investors. So yes, right, uh, the, the answer from me is the yes. Yeah, and, and, and just to add, I think uh, uh, what I also may have, went from low burn is to be more efficient. So a lot of attention will be paid. Uh, and this is kind of uh, already started in terms of understanding unit economics, but very specifically in terms of what is your acquisition cost for the customer? Uh, how long can, will you be able to retain them? You know, and how would that, uh, how viable is that uh, customer, both consumer or business? Right? So I think a lot of uh, attention will be paid to that. Okay, so I have uh, one more question, which is, what is the outlook for the investments in the automobile sector startups? How do you see the current environment for the Indian auto industry to adopt to multi-brand sales models and digitalization of businesses in India? Uh, from the uh, you know Japanese investor point of view, you know Japan is the uh, the car country, so there's uh, tons of the uh, investors rushing into the uh, India to capture the, uh, the sector exactly what you said now. So as I told that the, their effort for the uh, for themselves to do the uh, digital transformation won't last. But uh, right at this moment, say next say 30 to six days at least, at the shortest, uh, they have to stop that. Anyways, they cannot travel and anything. But yeah, after that, I believe they're, they're, you know, the, the momentum won't uh, change. they are going to keep the, uh, doing the investment into that, such kind of, uh, you know, the, the sectors. From the uh, pure investor's front point of view, it really depends. It really depends on the uh, sub-sector, and the, it really depends on the uh, micro, you know, the startup technology or exactly what they're doing. So, for example, we uh, recently invest in the, uh, you know, uh, bus operation company who is having their very unique approach. So we do that, we do the mobility, but the, uh, once again, it really depends on the uh, you know, micro you know, company's uh, uh, situation. And of course, that business has to have a very clear, you know, uh, the profitability focus. And if it's a technology, they have to be able to adapt into the demand of the larger players. Uh, that is my view. Bridge, yeah. would you like to add something? Yeah, Vera Sun has given a good overview. I think we can move to the next question. I don't have anything. Okay. So, how is uh, so? This is all about the technology startup. So, uh, is Japan open to the skincare, especially the Ayurveda startups also? Yes, very much. <laughs> you know, Japan is also the uh, uh, country. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know the, uh, uh, you know, some large player is keen to, you know, uh, enter the uh, India market. 
uh, who is related to the uh, skin and the uh, healthcare. Uh, sorry, the uh, you know the the, the cost mirror, etc. So, uh, largely, the answer is yes. And and there are there are uh, some of the people who who wants you to take a deeper dive into the healthcare sector. Uh, so within healthcare, what are the key areas you think will pick up uh, from here? Will it be telemedicine, diagnostic devices, or you know uh, what 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 are those subdomains you think uh, going forward uh, will pick up? I think overall, very broadly. Uh, you know, foreign investor, including the Japanese investor and the Singapore investor, are very much bullish about the healthcare sector, including almost all of the sector of the healthcare. Uh, but it's, of course, the uh, after the uh, COVID thing, you know, uh, remote something. For example, you know, we are the one of the investor of the uh, Docs up, so their you know uh, transaction is you know the, the surging now. And uh, some, you know, remote ICU, for example, you know, remote ICU is a very hot topic in the uh, Western countries nowadays. So maybe the same thing is going to happen in India or the, uh, any other developing country or in Indonesia. So, and uh, e-commerce, of course, as Bridge said, that we are the lead investor of uh, Medica Bazal, who is to the, uh, you know, the, um, you know, the, the. Uh, online purchase uh, by the uh, large hospitals. They sell from the needle to the uh, high-end machines, everything. So, uh, you know, at the very right this moment, you know, the, the supply chain is a very much a challenge, a little bit challenge, but the uh, in the uh, short term, it will be fixed. And the uh, such kind of supply chain for healthcare is, of uh, course, the, uh, uh, the other hot sector as well. And the other things like um, you know the uh, diagnostics, as you said, or the, uh, even the uh, bio pharma as well. So almost all the sectors are very keen. And the uh, maybe uh, Bridge, you can elaborate a little bit about the IoT uh, that we uh, made the introduction before. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So within uh, healthcare, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, we're also looking at medtech and IoT enabled uh, devices. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, those are a little bit harder to scale, especially when hardware is involved. Uh, but what we're seeing is a lot of companies coming up with uh, alternate hardware, uh, which is lower cost, but high throughput or high uh, uh, validation uh, from a clinical standpoint. And uh, it's getting a lot of acceptance both in the medical community in India and outside. So definitely uh, continue to look in that space as well. So, Bridge, from uh, for for a long time, the construction and real estate has not been doing really great in India. Do you think this situation is going to be the last nail in the coffin of uh, this sector? No, so I I don't see uh, you know construction and real estate can never really go away, right? People all will always need houses and offices uh, to work out of. Uh, but uh, what we've had is a very long and protracted uh, connection and um, with the uh, uh, real estate especially, it started in, even a few years back with uh, RERA being in, implemented. Um, I think uh, what the uh, industry was hoping, you know, with the green shoots coming in the last few months was that, uh, you know, the excess inventory was getting cleared and, and this year they were hoping for a turnaround which now likely looks uh, uh, not happening. I mean, it looks quite unlike, uh, unlikely. Um, uh, on the real estate side, the commercial real estate leasing was actually doing pretty well. Um, so if you look at the major cities like Bangalore and, and uh, Gurgaon and, and Pune and others, uh, Hyderabad, um, there, there was a huge uh, commercial real estate demand growing in double digit uh, per year. Uh, that actually will, I now I think will see a major softening as companies will uh, um, do hiring freezes or uh, there'll be at least some layoffs. Uh, and in fact, this whole work from home uh, uh, movement will accelerate further. Um, so, uh, yeah, unfortunately for real estate and construction, uh, it would be uh, the hard times would continue. Uh, construction might benefit from infrastructure spending. So, you know, one of the stimulus measures that the government will have to take is increase government spending uh, and continue to do so, especially on the infrastructure side. Um, and uh, the construction industry might benefit from that. Thank you. So, Ibiara-san, my next question is to you. Uh, 
in in two delegations because i have been the uh, one of the core member of the the nascom japan vc connect program and uh, in in two of our delegation uh, you know i haven't seen any of the startup uh, from the solar sector getting selected and you know participating there to pitch to the vc community and interestingly you know we the way we created this jury was we had a lot of representation from the japan vc side does that mean that the japan vc community is not very really concerned about the solar segment solar energy segment uh you know solar you know if we specifically uh you know named uh, some of the uh, larger player like a panasonic or the uh, denso or the uh, some other you know the battery player uh, energy player uh, and also the even the uh, soft bank is uh, massively investing in the uh, solar sector so definitely the uh, japanese corporations are very keen for the uh, sector itself but at the same time you know um they're you know uh, kind of um, you know the, the, they're quite picky i mean the uh, in terms of the uh, very specific technology and the uh, ip uh, that they have a very specific preference uh, what type of the technology they are looking for or the um, you know what type of the uh, solar panel they are looking for is uh, because of the uh, they are the very high end the uh, technology uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, mega chip companies so that the uh, it is quite uh, picky from them, and then you also they are they are sourcing around from the Israel, US, etc. So I believe that's why. So important thing is uh, uh, not only the solar sector startups. Uh, I want you founders to be able to explain explain very clearly uh, the very prop by not only the technology. By the uh, but the marketing and the uh, delivery, I mean the uh, sales. So you know that is the uh, the most important you know parts that they don't have, right? So not only the uh, technology sourcing, but the, they are looking for the uh, partner sourcing to deliver their technology and the product there in the uh, huge market in India, but uh, they cannot do it by themselves. So that the uh, you. Better to emphasize that the yeah, you can be the uh, technology not only the technology partner but the uh, delivery partner, so that the yeah, they can, they can be the much more uh, you know the, uh, aggressively uh, talk with you. Okay, so I have a very interesting question being raised here. We are a wellness retreat platform. Even though the current situation has impacted our bookings, but our traffic has jumped. 2x due to the increased user engagement on the content side during this time looking for now the the founder wants your view that how investors are going to take these interim metrics while eval evaluating a startup uh bridge go ahead uh yeah so uh, you know unfortunately i don't think so the the spikes uh during the lockdown period uh would um, you know, while the, the additional engagement is really great, um, investors will want to see what this additional digital engagement translates to um, in terms of long-term uh, business, right? Um, how does that translate into your business model? How do you monetize that? Um, so, unfortunately, I don't think so. Um, even for let's say even content companies, um, you know, while people are at home, there will definitely be a spike in terms of content usage. But um, that will probably shift as things return back to normal. Um, so the question really would be that how did you uh, use this additional uh, traffic and how did that benefit your business long term? And if, if you can demonstrate that, then you know maybe there's an opportunity that investors might uh, back you on. Thank you. So, uh, so one of the questions that I keep on hearing from uh, from startup founders is you know they were in very uh, advanced stages of discussions where, so they were about to close their round with uh, their uh, one or some uh, vcs and all of a sudden because of this situation now all the deals have gone to the back foot and those still being considered are on the renegotiation uh, renegotiation now what is your suggestions uh, suggestion for those founders who are facing the situation of 
uh, revaluation for their startup once uh, all the things were in line a couple of uh, weeks back yeah um uh, that is the uh, very unfortunate and the um, you know the unfortunate situation it's happening all around the world and it's not only in india and actually the uh, for the uh, financial institution side including the uh, vc fund etc is also the you know, facing the bit of the similar situation for example you know the avc is raising raising the uh, fund from the uh, lp investor but suddenly they cancel or postpone etc that is happening uh, same same is happening for the debt financing player right so the uh the, they suddenly the uh, withdraw the uh, you know the lending uh, deal uh, because of their cash flow so it's it's happening like a, a you know domino effect a butterfly effect kind of uh, uh you know happening so that the um only thing i can say is the uh, let's be the very much conservative uh let's not to uh, hope uh the things uh that you supposed to uh get is not easily coming so uh, only thing we can do is the uh, multiple you know uh, scenario for example if you are raising from the uh, venture capital you also start immediately talk with the uh, debt financial player or the uh, you know of course the secretary you have to cut the burn very much so that that's what i can say uh, to just add on to what avira san said um, you know we we also obviously seen uh, some of this happening uh, within our own portfolio um, so a couple of things one is if you have a signed term sheet um, uh the likelihood of it going to uh, completion are obviously higher but if pre long term you didn't have a signed term sheet uh then obviously all bets are off uh, everything would have to be uh, rethought through um, um i have also seen cases where it is a signed term sheet valuations are being renegotiated uh, uh, and again it depends on business impact um i think the one of the things that you can try to use uh, to salvage the situation is seeing what you can project post uh, lockdown right so uh, once once you get out of this situation uh, you know how would you be best prepared or what have you done to prepare your company your business to leverage and sometimes even take opportunity of uh, some of the behavioral changes that have happened right and if you can clearly demonstrate uh, that opportunity to uh, the investors then maybe there is a likelihood of at least going through and closing the round even though if it is uh, a smaller uh, negotiated valuation so i'll take another two or three questions and then we'll wind up the session so uh, so i have another question the, the founder says we are a language technology startup enabling b2c businesses localize their website and applications to multiple language through ai and ml now digital businesses is on the upsurge due to the current scenario what is your outlook on this situation and the startup uh if the business is you know if the all of your business process is concluded online only there's no any physical activity including the sales then the uh, you know this this covid situation won't affect your business right but the uh, if you have any physical activity for example sales um then the uh, you have to be very careful it really depends on that but the uh, overall uh you know uh we monitoring very carefully all of the portfolio company not only the uh, india but the indonesia and other south east asian countries you know digital concluded you know um business startups uh, kpis are surge now like a media company etc or the e-commerce even the e-commerce but e-commerce is sometimes you know the having the uh, delivery you know um uh, uh, you know the, the struggling so that the, uh, it really depends but the uh, overall internet uh you know the, the percentage of your business processes you know online completion or not is really affect that's that's my view so uh, you know rpa is something in india robotic process automation is uh, is a is something which is picking up big time but when it comes to to you know 
tap the Japanese market. Uh, I don't see many of these RPA firms able to tap to the to the ecosystem in Japan. Uh, all of us understand the language barrier. Uh, definitely, the language barrier is one of the biggest hurdle for the Indian RPAs to be uh, uh, implemented there. Any suggestion from uh, uh, you know Ibiara San? Your suggestion on the you know if if Indians Indian founders can those who are very eager to take this opportunity up any suggestion for those guys how do they pursue it oh actually the uh, we just invested in the uh, rps startups recently uh only the a few weeks back if i'm not wrong so actually i don't think the language would be you know the very much you know entry barrier uh even though the kanji two byte uh, character it's not so you know uh, hard for for the uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the to translate by the uh, you know dictionary etc. At least um, my you know our uh, you know explain, uh, uh, you know the experience for the uh, invest uh, to the uh, DD uh, done the DD for the uh, the the you know the RPA uh, the pipeline that I explained. Uh, so important thing is to have a partner. So, for the early stage, if you're the you know the late stage startup is okay, but the for the early stage at least the B minus startups definitely have to have a, uh, a local rep, uh, sales rep, or the technology partner there in Japan. Otherwise, uh, you know uh, it, it is very hard for the uh, Japanese uh, legacy corporation to deal with the uh, Indian startups directly. Especially uh, about the uh, technology startups, so that yeah, uh, we strongly recommend to have a local rep for all, all of our technology portfolio companies. If it's a service company, I don't even recommend to get into the uh, you know Japanese market. It's quite tough. So the uh, you know the, the business uh, you know uh, uh, custom is totally different. So that's that's my advice. Do you think this is the right time to launch a video on demand aggregate aggregator app so users can use and see videos at one place instead of installing multiple apps? Do you see that? Go ahead, Bridge. I think the, the biggest challenge in uh, doing something like that is customer acquisition, right? Uh, it takes a lot of money to spend uh, in marketing. Um, uh, the other aspect of it is also the content partnership um, and uh, licensing. Um, so, uh, um, you know, uh, any kind of content aggregation requires a very deep uh, partnership on the licensing front. So, I think if a startup has ability to solve for these two questions, I think content uh, uh, growth right now and digital consumption growth right now is exploding. So, there's a lot of opportunity there. So one last question: uh, What is the state of Martes, you know, Martech startup uh, at this moment? Sorry, your voice is cutting. Uh, okay, could you repeat once again? What is the state of Martech SaaS startups at this moment in Japan? Okay. Uh, you, you did you say SaaS? I, I couldn't I, I understand the 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 words. Yeah. SaaS, you mean, right? marketing tech marketing tech yes marketing tech SaaS. marketing tech SaaS. okay marketing tech SaaS. um it's really very specific question you know for example you know J japan is a kind of a you know SaaS country everywhere says SaaS, SaaS. and then they also the uh marketing is also the uh you know one of the uh very Typical, you know, sector uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, having the very good fit with the uh, uh, SARS business model. So, honestly speaking, tons of the, you know, the marketing SARS startups over there. So to compete with them is uh, quite tough. Even their side is very keen to enter India market. So the uh, competition would be very, very tough. So if you have uh, any specific you know, uh, uniqueness for the uh, very, you know, niche subsector, maybe it could be interested. But if you say widely as a, uh, if you ask me that the widely about the, what, what is the uh, 
chance for the India startups to go into the uh, Japan market as a uh, as the uh, marketing SaaS startup. I don't think it's easy. It's very much easy. Too much a red ocean. I think. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Abhira San. Thank you very much, Red San. Thank you for your time. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the discussion, and I hope this was helpful to uh, to most of the founders uh, who raised their question, and we were able to address most of the question. Thank you so much, uh, and Thank stay you. safe. Yeah, you too. Uh, all the founders. Uh, so, you know, any, uh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, any last to... comment from Ibiara San from your side and Bridge San? Yeah, uh, thank you for the uh, very enthusiastic engagement and the a uh, lot of the uh, questions. I hope we could uh, you know the answer properly. So I know the uh, India is the one of the most toughest country in terms of the uh, you know the lockdown you know strictness. So I'm now here in the uh, Singapore. Singapore is uh, slightly better, but the situation getting very closer to India. So that the, I'm always learning from the, uh, my team and my portfolio founders how we can prepare for the uh, this kind of lockdown things. But the I surely, you know, the, uh, we're gonna o overcome uh, the period. And then important thing is, um, you know, I, I, I what I love the uh, about the contemporary entrepreneurship is the uh, you know to overcome the difficulty uh, that is the uh, one of the strengths of uh, you know the founders and the entrepreneurs right then we uh, make the challenge into the uh, you know, opportunity is also the character of the entrepreneurship so that the uh, entrepreneurship can contribute to the society is uh, very huge i believe so that the, i'm very happy to be the backer of the uh, entrepreneurs so that the uh, if you guys have any, I don't know, uh, a question or support, I don't know if we can, you know, meet to the uh, how much, but yeah, please don't hesitate to reach out to our local team. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Yep. Thanks. Uh, thanks everyone. Thanks for listening to us. And as Abhiyar San said, uh, you know, more power to you to survive for the next six months. And if uh, you're able to pivot and, and uh, brainstorm and, and come up with solutions.